Hello everyone and welcome to this new tutorial of Plexus. So today I'm gonna model a retaining wall using GeoGrids. But before I start, if you're new to this YouTube channel, hit the like and subscribe button. And I'm gonna talk about the retaining wall and GeoGrids before I model them. So this is a retaining wall. It's formed of blocks. And as you can see, the GeoGrid is extended from the blocks to the back side of the wall this is a close-up picture you can see how it's locked between the walls and how it's how it extends back to the soil so when you have geogrid behind the soil you can see that the retaining wall will act from here to here there will be a, tens a tension force here a tensile force in the geogrid from this point to this point where you do not have only a retaining wall with the thickness but a retaining wall with a mechanical extension to the thickness here so here we can see the gravel behind the retaining wall it's essential to have a good material behind the retaining wall so let's start I'm going to show you how I already modeled this exercise so first of all I made a borehole I've created a material which I named soil then I created a plate which I named wall it will be the wall that we've made and I've also modeled a geogrid so you should pay attention that here I've modeled the wall in a 2d software in Plexus 2d software and not 3d it's easier to model this kind of wall in a 2d uh, in the 2d part of Plexus to save some time but if you have a weird shape or something you must do with 3D, like the 3D, go ahead and do it. But in general, you will use 2D to model such type of retaining walls. So I went to structure. I've drawn a line from here. I've right clicked on it and create a plate. Then I assigned the material to my plate. As you can see here, it extends from 0 to minus 15. So it's not a small retaining wall. We're talking about a wall with a 15 meter height. I've seen previously these types of wall, which are formed from small bricks. And it's astonishing what geogrids can do. But to achieve this kind of stability, we must extend our geogrids with a good distance behind the wall, as we've did here. After we've drawn several geogrids from here, we can create line then uh, create geogrid so I've directly created a geogrid from here I've assigned my materials to all the geogrids I've created the mesh flow condition and stage construction so as you can see here I already made the calculation but here I obtained a failure a error code so in phase one it's the initial phase phase two I've activated the wall with the geogrids but what's the error code if you double click we can see soil body seems to collapse please inspect output results so i'm gonna expect uh, i'm gonna see the output results here inspect the output results go to calculation results so in this tutorial it's a bonus i will show you how to resolve these types of error although i've made several videos on this topic you can find them Find, you can find them on my youtube channel so we can see that in the phase one the problem is generated from the soil as you can see how the entire soils the entire soil move toward the wall so here you can directly know that the problem is directly linked to the soil as we can see that the geogrid works fine but the problem is from the soil so here we can do several things. We can extend the geogrid, but here in this case it's already too long. Or we can change the soil model. In general, the soil behind such a retaining wall must be a uh, rock soil. So here we can see there is no problem in the stiffness, although a rock can be harder than 20,000. 
But the problem here, as I expect, is from the cohesion and the friction angle. It should be at least 45 to represent the rock. Uh, when you have a high friction angle, that means your soils tend to be a rocky soil. And when there's a high cohesion, uh, when there's a high cohesion parameter, parameter, it tends to be mud. So I'm gonna press on OK. I'm gonna tick on the face. I'm gonna calculate. So here we can assign a node, and we can leave it like that. So I'm gonna assign a node here, and it will be the top of the wall. As we can see, how we'll generate a uh, how we can generate. Um, the calculation results so I'm gonna pick this point here so I have my note I'm gonna press on update so I'm gonna launch the calculation here it, melt, it might take several time and uh, by the way I did not put the update mesh option in this uh, exercise because it's not a need here the geo grid will only work in tension and for the rest of the people who will say I didn't uh, up, uh, I didn't update it or course in the mesh near the geo grid as I've said early on, uh, earlier on in several comments, it's important to have a coarse mesh, but it's not uh, it's not crucial. You can calculate the model without. As we can see, it's now passed. So the problem was in the soil type, and now we can see the deformation. This is the deformation here. Deformation, total displacement, and we can see how the largest displacement is on the top of the wall. And we can see how the displacement ends here. I can double click on a geo grid and see the deformation here. Can see the forces in the geo grid it's only a axial force as you can see there's no bending force or or anything else as it's only it only works in tension and here also i can create a graph because i've created already a point i'll go to chart new here i choose the project and here i can choose the node the multiplier here Let's say that's this one, and here is the total deformation. And here we can see the deformation chart. So, this is it for this tutorial. If you have any question, please leave them in the comment section. And thanks for watching.